Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. I'm super excited for today's video because I am finally doing my full face of Catrice Cosmetics. I have had this package sitting in my makeup room for like three weeks at this point. I got it back in December, but at that point I was in the midst of Vlogmas and I had pretty much all of my videos already planned out for the rest of the month. And then I took the first week off of January and now we are finally back sitting down, playing with makeup. I have a full face of Catrice. Every single solitary product is Catrice. Some of these products are not first impression I've already owned them for a while and I have been loving them for a while and then I feel like the majority though is brand new products to me brand spanking new testing them out for the first time on camera here for you guys today and I cannot wait some of these are like really hyped up and I want to see if they're worth the hype or not. Before you get started, don't forget to upload every Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday for you guys. If you like this video while you're watching it, please go ahead and give it a big thumbs up. It really does help my channel out. And other than that, if you're excited and you want to see a full face of Catrice and my first impressions on some of the products, then let's go ahead and get started. So like I said, some of these products I did already own. The two primers I'm going to go in with today, I already own, and I really, really like them a lot. Also, the highlight I already own and love, and then the two setting sprays that I have options. I don't know which one I'm going to use yet, but I'll show you both. But other than that, everything else is brand spanking new to me. We're going to start off with my eyes like I normally do. And for that, I got their five in a box mini eyeshadow palette. What does this remind you of? Natasha Denona? Yeah, I thought so too. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not Catrice. I don't know if they're trying to dupe Natasha Denona, but I don't know. I kind of feel like they are, but I ended up picking up the um, soft rose look one. This is not going to match the blush that I purchased, but that's okay. I am really excited to dig into this. I have no idea about their eyeshadow formulation, and I feel like I haven't even heard very much about it either. We are going to start off with this shade right here and use that as a transition shade. I just looked on the back of the palette, and it doesn't look like they have shade names, so we're just, I'm just going to point to the ones I'm using. This looks like a really light shade. Yeah, I don't know how well it's going to really show up on my eye. Let's go in with another layer. Um, you can kind of see it. I feel like this is just going to be one that I'm going to have to layer up. There, it's starting to show up. Alrighty, so I had to put three layers on, but it definitely did show up. It's just a really light, cool tony, taupe sort of shape. I definitely think that that is pretty. Um, next up, we're going to go into this more rosy shade right here. And I'm going to start putting that on the outer corner and up into the crease as well. Hello? <laughs> okay, so this is definitely another really really light shade. Um, okay, that's not showing up. I'm gonna switch brushes. All right, I switched to a different BK Beauty brush. Hopefully I can pack a little bit more pigmentation on with this brush. Hmm. I feel like this rose shade is just really not showing up very well. I'm having to like really layer and pack it on. Like this is probably my fourth layer. Hmm, okay, we're gonna go to another shade. <laughs> we're gonna go to this one down here at the edge now. And we're just going to deepen that outer corner as well. It's not showing up, guys. <laughs> like, look how deep and dark it looks in the pan, and then look at it on my eye. Even this shade, it looks like a rose shade. Hmm. I'm gonna go in with a rougher brush now with that rose shade and just kind of blend this all together. So, these mattes are not working out. <laughs> um, they're like fluffing away to nothing. Like it, it looks like I put one very muted, rosy shade on my eyelids. And like this pretty much disappeared. Let me try to add more with this brush. I feel like I'm like really trying to pack this on, guys, and it is not showing up. The good news is, the good news is, it's not getting patchy. Um, they're also like insanely light shadows that are barely showing up. So I feel like that's probably why they're not getting patchy because like I can barely see them on my eyes, but uh, at least it's not getting patchy and they're blending together nicely. Like they truly are like blending all together nicely, but they're just kind of blending away into nothing if they even show up on the eye. Um, so yeah, I am not loving these three mattes at all. Uh, let's go ahead and swatch these two shimmers and see what we're working with. Okay, so these look nice and pretty. Alrighty, okay, yeah, these look decent. These look workable. So I'm gonna put NYX Glitter Primer on and then we're gonna put this shade on the lid. So we're gonna go in with this little bit deeper, darker shade. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna put, yeah, I'm gonna keep that on the half and then I'm gonna put the um, lighter shade on the inner half because that actually is a little bit deeper than I was anticipating. So I don't wanna put that all over the lid. So we're just gonna do like a gradation. Okay, 
so there it is. It's not a bad eye look. It's not terrible, but I just, these mattes like barely showed up at all. I really wish it had more of a rosy tone to it. It just kind of took on like a gray tone. When I mix together this and this to try to just have some sort of pigmentation, it just kind of turned into like a gray tone on my eye instead of like having this rosy tone. I'm gonna try to add that rosiness back in maybe. Yeah, I just feel like it's just turning into like a rosy gray beige bleh, sort of tone. Um, but the shimmers are pretty. I do definitely like the shimmers. I think they're poppy and punchy, um, which is nice. I feel like that definitely saved the look. I'm gonna put a little bit more of this deeper shade on. Um, so yeah, as of right now, I would not recommend these to you guys, uh, not gonna lie. Three of the five shades are uh, kind of kind of duds. So yeah, not starting off this video too hot, but that's okay. I'm gonna go to the other eye and then we're moving on to the face. To start off on the face, we're going in with two primers. Yes, two. Is that excessive? A little bit, but I kind of just wanted to show you both of them and I actually really enjoy both of them. I'm kind of glad we're starting off with a solid base that I know I like, considering I'm going in with new foundation, concealer, powder, all of that. So first we're gonna start off with their Prime and Fine Aqua Fresh Hydro Primer. This is their Fresh It Up one. I love this primer. It is so good. It's hydrating. It's a little bit more of a jelly sort of consistency. So it is nice and hydrating, but it's not too oily or greasy at all on the face. It doesn't like turn your face into an oil slick to where like it's going to be too much. You know, it just is a really nice layer of hydration and it feels like cooling on the skin and it like sinks right in. This is one of my favorite primers. But I wanted to show this other one in action just in case you are a little bit more on the oily side and you don't want a hydrating primer like this one or you just need a pore filling primer, you just kind of struggle with pores. I feel like I do a little bit here in my T-zone. Um, so in my T-zone, just my T-zone, I'm gonna go in with the Prime and Fine Poreless Blur Primer. This is their Goodbye Pores one. This is a little bit thicker of a consistency than the hydrating one. It's definitely more of that like silicone-y, pore filling sort of primer. I don't know if it has silicones in it. I'm not sure, but like if you can tell, yeah, that definitely really does just smooth out the skin and really does like make my pores disappear. That is, that's wild. <laughs> I feel like my pores just legitimately disappeared on my face. I don't reach for this one too, too often. I don't typically on the everyday go in with a pore filling primer. I usually just go in with hydrating cause that's like the main issue of my skin is that it's dry. But when I'm trying to go like glam and just look perfected, I will go in with a pore filling primer. It's a little annoying because I don't think Catrice is available anywhere else but their website now. They used to be available at Ulta, but they're not anymore. I don't understand why. I think they just pulled out of Ulta. Honestly, it's probably saving them so much money to not have to ship all of their product to all the different Altas all over the United States. And then also having to keep up with people ordering from their website, ordering from Alta, shipping to Alta. Like I'm sure it's such a huge weight off their back and they're probably saving a ton of money. But then again, it's kind of a bummer because you cannot go into a store and swatch and try things out and see it in person which is kind of annoying. So anyways, moving on. Next, we're going in with their True Skin Hydrating Foundation. This has hyaluronic acid and it's supposed to be long wearing. This baby blew up recently, like a couple months ago. I don't know if it was Tati who blew it up or not, but she loves this foundation. I'm not gonna lie though. That makes me really nervous to test it out because she also loves the RC RCMA foundation. And I bought that and that was one of the worst foundations I think I've ever tried. But I know a lot of other people like this foundation as well. I ended up picking up the shade 002 Neutral Ivory. It says on the back, true skin but better. Hydrating foundation with hyaluronic acid and a watermelon seed oil leaves a perfectly even skin tone and natural matte finish. Medium to high coverage with a comfortable skin feeling. Dermatologically approved. That's a little confusing to me that it's a hydrating foundation with a matte finish. I like the bottle. It's glass and sturdy and it comes with a pump. So weird. I haven't even like pumped this out. I have no idea if it's even gonna match. So that is that there. As you can see, it's pretty liquidy. Um, it definitely has a scent, but not like an added scent, just kind of like a makeup y scent. Alrighty, we're just gonna go in, guys. We're just gonna go in. I'm gonna dot it on my face. Mm. Yeah, I definitely think this is gonna be too yellow, but I'm just gonna do that and we're gonna blend it in because I don't know how fast this dries. It says medium to full, which I definitely, you know, that's the finish I prefer. Okay, actually, you know what? That's a pretty good shade match. It is slightly yellow, but for the most part, it definitely 
matches me. But you know what? I feel like that's one of my strengths, guys. I feel like I am usually typically good at um, picking my shade match online. Sometimes I don't do it right. But for the most part, I feel like I'm pretty good at choosing a good shade for myself. So it's blending into the skin really nicely and pretty quickly. It doesn't seem to be drying too, too fast. I definitely don't think that I would like keep this on for like dot it on and then like answer a phone call and then go to, you know, blend it in. Like it definitely is drying fairly quickly, but not too quickly to where you don't have time to blend it. All right, so this is with about one layer on my skin. I like it, I don't love it. I'm not like blown away by it. Um, but I, I do like it. I definitely think it has quite a bit of coverage. I am going to go in with a second layer to fully build it up just because I like full opacity. I like to not see any of this peeking through. Um, but you know, this is definitely a good medium coverage, which is nice. Um, like I said, it blended in nicely. It is looking a little bit dry though. It is looking a little bit dry, like on my forehead and stuff and on my nose. But that's pretty typical with a foundation. So I'm not like totally mad at it. But yeah, I, I'm, I'm not blown away. So I am gonna go build up a second layer. Let's see what that does. Okay, so here it is all blended in with two layers. I definitely think that that helped the coverage, but it also helped emphasize a little bit of the dryness. Honestly, I don't hate it. I think it looks pretty decent on my skin and I'm hoping that by the time I have everything on, concealer, you know, um, setting powder, and then I spray it, I really do think I will like it. I think, I don't know. And like I said, I do think it's definitely a good shade match for me. It's looking a little bit more yellow on camera than it does in person. Um, but yeah, I feel like it's definitely a good shade match and I'm excited about this. I'm excited to keep testing it out. I don't absolutely hate it, but I'm not head over heels in love with it. Next up, I also picked up their True Skin High Coverage Concealer. Again, hyaluronic acid is in it and it is waterproof. I picked up the shade 001 Neutral Swan. Oh, this only has a six month shelf life. It's not very long. I'm definitely gonna keep this longer than six months. The Dofa has a more like triangle sort of shape. Again, no really smell, just kind of a uh, makeup-y smell. So we're just going to put a little bit under my eyes. See how that goes. This is supposed to be like fairly full coverage, but not drying, I don't think, from what I've heard. Yeah, it has it says it has hyaluronic acid in it. So um, not the best shade match, definitely a little bit yellow for me, but that's okay. I'm just going to blend it in. It is blending in nicely. Oh, I definitely think it dried pretty quickly, kind of like the foundation. You definitely want to make sure you're blending this in. Again, I don't love it. I don't hate it, but I don't love it. It's a little bit drying on my under eyes and it didn't fully cover everything up. I am going to put a tiny, tiny bit more, just like one little boop, boop. Okay, I think that helped. I don't know, guys. I don't know how I feel about this. Like I said, I blended out nicely. Um, it's not too, too drying, but it is definitely slightly drying on my under eyes. It is going into my eye creases, eye lines already, but that's pretty typical for a concealer. Once I blended it out, it was a pretty decent shade match. It gives me a little bit of brightness without being like too stark white or anything like that. Yeah, I don't know. The second layer definitely helped cover up more of that blueness. I don't really want to put it anywhere else on my face. Let's put it a little, maybe a little bit here to see if it can cover up some of this redness. Yeah, I didn't do a ton to cover that up. But yeah, like kind of like the foundation. I don't hate it, but I don't, I don't love it. So I'm definitely gonna have to keep testing both of those out for sure. Next up, we have a setting powder from Catrice. This is their True Skin Mineral Loose Powder. This has hyaluronic acid, but it is a transparent matte, apparently. I picked up the shade, oh, I picked up the shade transparent matte, sorry. They, I believe they had other shades of this. So it comes with the little spinny, so you can have it open and close, which is nice. Comes out like that. I'm gonna get a little bit in the cap. I feel like it might be a little deep for my skin. Maybe not. So I'm gonna get some on my BK Beauty brush. This is their 108. I always use this to set under my eyes. We do have some creasing going on. We're going to set under here. Okay, I definitely feel like that oxidized a little bit, but that is okay. And then we're gonna take a little bit more on a big fluffy brush and set down the rest of my face. Okay, so that set my face. It set my face. 
I mean, it's not anything like revolutionary. My skin looks a little bit dry, but it was just kind of already looking dry from the foundation and um, concealer. So, but I mean, it did set it down nicely. It doesn't feel tacky or anything like that. And it definitely does have a mattifying finish for sure. Kind of like everything else so far. I don't love it, but I don't hate it. <laughs> it's turning into a pretty mess sort of review, huh? Then for bronzer, we have their Sun Lover Glow Bronzing Powder. I picked up the shade 010 Sunkissed Bronze. Let's open this baby up. Ooh, I like that it's a dome. I don't know why, but I do. This looks really pretty. It looks like a really nice like bronzer shade. It has a little bit of sheen and glow to it, which I am never upset about that. It looked pretty pigmented in that swatch right there. So I'm just gonna get a little bit on my brush. Ooh, pretty powdery. And then we're going to lightly start buffing that in lightly. Ooh. Oh, okay. It's blending out nicely though. It was a little intense at first, but it's blending out nicely. Definitely a warm shade for sure, which I don't hate. I definitely need to be like in the mood for that and like the makeup for that. Unlike the everyday, I try to go in with a little bit more neutral of a bronzer, but the Ilia Nightlight Drawn In bronzer is like a really warm shade like this. And that's like one of my new favorite bronzers. So I don't hate a warm bronze. I will say I do see like straight up glitter in this pan. You probably can't see it, but I mean, there is like glitter. Yeah, yeah, there's glitter in this. There's there's definitely just straight up glitter in this. Maybe that's like the sheen and glow. Uh, I don't love that either just because I'd rather just have it be glowy. Like the L'Oreal Lumi bronzer is just like a glow. There's no sparkle in it. It just is a really nice, pretty glow to your skin. And this definitely, I mean, I don't think you're gonna be able to pick it up on camera, but this definitely just has like just straight up sparkle in it. But it is blending out very nicely. It's not getting patchy or anything. It's not lifting my foundation underneath. It's also a really pretty shade. Like I said, nice and warm and definitely sun-kissed. So overall, between all of the new products that I've tried so far, this is probably my favorite, but again, I don't know. It just like, it's literally glitter. Like I, there's just particles of tiny shimmer glitters all over my face. So I don't love that. But next up, we're going to put on highlight. This is a product that I know I love. This is their More Than Glow Highlighter in the shade Supreme Rose Beam. I got this into me in PR through Octoly and it has literally become one of my favorite highlighters ever. It's so beaming and blinding and beautiful on the skin. So we're just going to apply, oh yeah. Oh, I love this. If you can tell the flowers that come on it is almost rubbed down because I just use it quite often and it's so affordable. Yeah, love this, love this so much. Next up for blush, we have their Cheek Lover Oil Infused Blush and this is in the shade Blooming Hibiscus. I would not have bought this shade for this eyeshadow. Um, but honestly, I feel like this only came in this one shade, which is kind of odd to me. I don't know why they would only have one shade of blush. Oh, I don't know about this. What's wrong? Did you hear him meow? I don't know if you guys heard that. Yeah, so I don't know how I am going to feel about this on camera. It's looking pretty orange, but in person, it's looking pretty orange in person too, actually. I'm gonna use my Flower Beauty blush brush because this is nice and like not densely packed. We're just gonna get some on. Okay, very pigmented, <laughs> very pigmented. Definitely not gonna go in with any more. I'm just gonna try to diffuse what I already have on my brush. I don't hate it, I don't hate it. It definitely has a very like sheen to it, like a gold shift, um, which you can definitely tell when I'm holding it up to the camera in the pan. I'm trying to decide my thoughts on this. I, I don't, I keep saying the same thing. I don't hate it, but I don't love it, but it's true. Like this is, it's a pretty blush, um, but it definitely has some, like a lot of sheen luminosity to it. But the actual like orange poppy punchy color is nice and pretty. Um, I definitely think I would reach for this more in the spring and summer than right now in the dead of winter, but it's nice. And again, I would not have paired it with this like cool tone eye look, but I had to work with what I got. I just, I think it's weird that I'm pretty sure this was the only shade or I wouldn't have bought such a bright poppy punchy shade, but I'm pretty sure this was the only shade, which is just kind of odd to me. I don't know why they wouldn't have more shades. Then for brows, I picked up one of their pencils. This is their Slimmatic Ultra Precise Brown Pencil, Brow Pencil, and I picked up the shade Medium. So it's just like a really skinny sort of brow pencil. I typically like these sort of pencils. They seem to be really easy to fill in your brows and not make them too blocky. Well, it's a pretty good shade match for me as well. A little warm, but nothing terrible. And it's pigmented to where it's like going on, but not too pigmented. It's got a spoolie on the other side for you to 
spoolie through your brows. Okay, yeah, I like that. I mean, is it like the most, is it like a revolutionary brow pencil that I'm like run out and buy it? No, definitely not, but it's not awful. I mean, I'm really not picky about my brow pencils though. I don't have a ton to fill in or anything like that. So maybe if you are a little picky about your brow pencils, I don't know how much you would like this. It's getting the job done. It's filling in my brows exactly how it should. And like I said, I like this, uh, I like this shade. So this is a win, this is a win. I finished my eyes off camera really quickly. I just mixed together these two matte shades and ran it along my lower lash line and then used the highlight as my inner corner um, highlight. Next up for mascara, I have their Catrice Glam and Doll False Lash Mascara. They had a couple different ones to choose from, but I chose this one for the wand. It has like a really spiky sort of wand that I typically enjoy. I don't know why I smell that. It just smells like mascara. I, you know what? I have not had the best luck with drugstore mascaras. So I'm just going to give this one a go and just try not to judge it too hard. <laughs> I also feel like mascara is one of those things that you have to try more than once and you have to kind of give it time to dry out a little bit. Usually mascaras get really, really good a week or two in. So I'm just gonna try this one out today and try not to judge it too, too hard. The wand is very spiky. Like one of those wands that almost hurts a little bit. It's getting the job done. I feel like it's making my lashes look good. Okay, so this is with one coat and with none. I don't know. I, it's, not, it's not terrible. Don't hate it, but I don't love it. But I will say it's not making my lashes clumpy, which is really nice. You guys know I struggle with my lashes getting clumpy. And this is not doing that. I am going to try to add a second layer, a second coat, and see what happens. Maybe it'll get clumpy then. Hopefully not. I feel like it looks pretty decent. I definitely think it looks better on this eye than this eye, but I feel like that's typical with my eyelashes. I don't know why. These tend to be like my worst set of lashes, but you know, for the most part, it looks good. It's not clumpy. It seems to be holding a curl pretty decently in the in this current moment after just applying it. It makes my lashes look long, a little bit thicker, not too, too thickening or volumizing, but not, not the worst mascara I've ever tried, because trust me, I've tried some not so good mascaras. Next up for lips, I went ahead and purchased a lip liner and a lipstick. This is their Lip Foundation Pencil, and I picked up the shade I Take You to the Chocolate Shop. Interesting. <laughs> so it looks like this. Am I going to have to, like, sharpen this before I try it out? It almost looks like it's fallen down in there. Let me do a swatch. So that is the lip liner shade. Ooh, I actually like that a lot. I feel like it's going to match my sweater really nicely. And then I also picked up their Plumping Gel Lipstick, Power Plumping Gel Lipstick. And I picked up the shade My Lips, My Rules. And this is a really, really nude shade. I wanted to pick it up on purpose, this nude. Oh, yeah, that's nude. Oh, wow, that's nude. Ooh, it's really uh, shiny. Seems like it's going to be nice and hydrating. Hopefully these two products go well together because this is the only option I got. <laughs> so I'm going to line my lips with the liner and fill it in a little bit. I already need to sharpen this. Okay, it's not sharpening very nicely, almost like the Huda Beauty one when I sharpened it because you're not supposed to sharpen that one, it's a twist up. But this one is like not, not a twist up, but it's like not sharpening very well at all. Watch this be a twist up and I just don't know. There's, what is happening? It's not a twist up though, I don't know. That sharpened very, very ugly. <laughs> So I really like this shade a lot. It glided on my lips very nicely as well. I got a big old chunk right there though. I don't know. I don't know about this guys. All right, we're gonna, we're gonna try the lipstick. So definitely because I paired it with a really deep lip liner, the lipstick is not showing up as nude on my lips, but that's okay. I actually don't hate this combination. I'm excited to try this out with other lip liners though that don't seem as creamy, but, but I don't mean that in a good way. Like this was very, very creamy, but almost like too creamy and too emollient. I feel like this video is not going very well. But lastly, we have two setting sprays to choose from. Both of these I know I actually really, really love. These are their Prime and Fine Fixing Sprays. So this one right here is their Anti-Shine Fixing Spray, which is a matte finish. And then this one right here is their Dewy Glow Fixing Spray and it is illuminating. So this one, I definitely feel like it has a matte finish, I guess. I, I kept saying in past videos that I don't feel like this has a matte finish. And I guess I want to re-explain myself. When you put it on there, I feel like it does, but I just don't think it's anti-shine. I feel like it doesn't do much to stop your oils from peeking through um, throughout the day, so it doesn't keep you matte. And then this one is definitely pretty glowy and dewy. Which one do I want to use? 
I thought for a hot second that I was gonna use the dewy one because the foundation was pretty drying on me. Um, but the, my products I used were so glowy that I look, I look glowy even though I don't feel glowy. So let's do both. Let's do both. Let's do a little bit of this first, just a little bit. Cause this is intense. Sorry, I'm about to spray it, but like this is intense. Like if you want dewy, you can go overboard really quickly with this. And then let's spray the matte one on. I don't know why I didn't get my fan out. And here is the finished look for you guys. Some of these tones I definitely would not have paired together, like the really warm bronzer and warm cheeks and warm lip. I wouldn't have paired with this cool tone sort of eye, but that's okay, we were testing out for the first time. I'm gonna really quickly run through the products as like a wrap up of my thoughts. The eyeshadows, I did not really enjoy this at all. The three mattes barely showed up on me at all. Like they kind of fluffed away. They kind of all blended into one eyeshadow color. Um, the shimmers are pretty, but it's really not hard to formulate shimmers. I feel like a ton of drugstore brands have nice shimmers it's really where the drugstore struggles is in their matte shadows and i feel like this definitely um is a prime example of that so uh, as of right now i do not recommend those to you guys at all i mean i just tried that one uh, color story there are other ones so maybe the other ones are better i don't really know the primers i absolutely love this is one of my favorite hydrating primers ever and this is super pore filling i highly recommend both of those the foundation i'm definitely on the fence about i think my skin looks nice and pretty right now it definitely had enough coverage for like the everyday i don't know if i would wear this to like a really super glam sort of situation where i want it to look absolutely perfect because it didn't cover up absolutely everything um but i like it it's nice it was a little bit drying on my skin but a lot of foundations are so i'm gonna have to definitely keep trying this out this one i definitely liked least of the two i like the foundation more this was okay it's a little bit drying on my under eyes and i definitely still see quite a bit of my blueness peeking through so again i'm gonna have to keep you know testing them out the bronzer it blended out very nice and pretty and it is a really nice warm sort of shade but it's got those glitters in it i don't understand why you can't see it like definitely on camera and even in person you can't really see it but if you like get really up close it's literally just my face is covered in like really tiny glitters so i don't love that but it is a pretty tone and it blended out nicely i already knew i loved the highlight it's absolutely stunning it's a great drugstore option if you just want a really blinding glowy highlight it also comes in a more of a gold shade if you like that better oh i forgot about the setting powder um this was okay kind of like the other products i didn't love it i didn't hate it that's like the theme of this video i didn't love it i didn't hate it they're just okay products i guess this set my face down nicely again it was a little bit drying i definitely don't think i would reach for this over a lot of my other setting powders but it's not super drying to where i think i'll never use it again the blush is interesting it's a nice pretty like pinky orangey sort of shade but like that shift is so intense it has such a gold shift to it it's almost as if you put like a gold highlight all over your cheek so i don't love this i think i may get a little bit more use out of it in the summer spring and summertime but i definitely don't think i'm gonna reach for it much right now the mascara is okay i mean it's, it's not terrible um i definitely think it's pretty but i definitely can see it flaking down throughout the day it was a really dry formula so i have a feeling it's gonna flake throughout the day but we shall see. I feel like it's already kind of flaking a tiny bit. Um, and I just applied it a couple minutes ago. So again, don't love it. Don't hate it. Brow pencil was okay. It's just a brow pencil. There's a million brow pencils out there that are like this, that are a couple dollars that are good, not great, not revolutionary. They're just brow pencils. It's kind of hard. I feel like to mess up a brow pencil. Um, so yeah, I liked it. I'll definitely, you know, get my use out of it. The lip liner was very, very creamy. And like I said, it just, it sharpened so oddly. I, I don't know. It, it almost feels like you're not supposed to sharpen it but you are. So like, I don't know how I feel about that. The shade is beautiful. I love the shade, but it was almost like too glidey. I can sense this being the type of lip liner that just kind of doesn't stay put. I don't know. I'll keep trying it out. And the lipstick was interesting. It almost had like no pigmentation to it. Like you almost cannot see it at all. So I feel like this is going to be a type of lipstick that really takes on whatever lip liner you put it over, which I don't love. I was really hoping that it would be like a really nice tan, cool tone, light lipstick. So I could use it as an ombre sort of lipstick, but it just doesn't have enough pigmentation, but it's shiny and it's comfortable and pretty on the lips. So can't really hang on it too much. And then the setting sprays, where's the other one? I actually really do love these setting sprays. I've already gone through one of their fixing sprays in the past, and both of these are halfway done, and I plan on finishing up both of these, and I have a backup of this one. So I love their setting sprays. So all in all, this was kind of a duddy video. I'm not gonna lie. I definitely don't feel like I fell in love with any of these new products. The products that I love are the ones that I 
already own from them. All the new products I tested out, I did not fall in love with, which I'm really bummed about because Catrice is such a nice, affordable brand. But I'm definitely gonna keep trying like these products out because I've heard good things about them and I'm like, okay, I've heard good things. Oh, why do I like absolutely love them? You know what I mean? But again, the motto, the theme of the video, I didn't love it, but I didn't hate it. So none of these were absolutely terrible to where I like, I'll never reach for them again. And I'm like, do not, do not buy them. Um, but right now I don't think I'd really recommend much to you guys. So like I said, I'm going to keep testing them out and I will keep, um, keep you guys updated on my thoughts. That was it, you guys. That was my full face of Catrice. Let me know down below. Have you tried any of these products out. What are your thoughts? If you have, have you tried like the true skin foundation and concealer? Do you love them? I would love to hear you guys' thoughts down below about Catrice, about them moving from Ulta, just anything you have to say about the brand. I want to know down below. If you made it to the end of this video, thank you so much. You're awesome. I love you. Please subscribe if you have not yet. And I hope to see you in my next video. Bye guys.